Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, in this video, we are going to discuss the concept of price elasticity of demand, simply known as PED. Now, marketing department uses the elasticity tool to help understand the quantity demanded of their product. So how much demand is expected? What are the forecasted sales? That's exactly what they're looking to answer when they use elasticity. And since the topic for today is price elasticity of demand, the factor that we're using is price. So what we're going to introduce, what we're going to understand rather, is what happens to the quantity demanded of your product when you change the price of it. And for that, I have sought the help of a lemonade stand example. So let's assume this it's a hot summer day and you and your friend decided to set up a lemonade stall in your street. And you set the price at $2 a glass. Right now, you see three people come in and drink your lemonade and they seem to be happy with it. But you're not happy. You're, you, you want more people to come in. Three is just not enough. So you decide to take action. And the action that you take is to slash the price. And now the price is not $2, but $1.50. So you've reduced the price of your lemonade by 50 cents. And when you do that, you see an influx of more friends come out to play. And once they're tired and thirsty, they want your delicious lemonade. So we can see from three customers, you've gone to six customers by dropping 50 cents in the price of your lemonade. This change is we've seen a price in, a change in price maybe a little bit you can and for those of you who can do the quick math we can see that this is a 25 percent decrease in the price 50 cents decrease on two dollars is 25 cents and we've seen the number of customers double that's 100 percent increase in the number of customers this relationship is what the price elasticity of demand concept explains to us because it measures the responsiveness or the likelihood of an increase or decrease in the demand for your product when the price of that product is either increased or decreased. So we saw that when you drop the price and logically that makes sense because when price goes down, the quantity demanded for a product would go up. So when we drop the price, we saw that the quantity demanded increased and the reverse would have been true as well. If the price had been increased, the number of customers would have gone down. Now that's the concept itself, but attached with this con with this concept is a formula and you will be asked to calculate it every now and then in your exams and the PED formula looks like this price elasticity of demand is equal to percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price now the words percentage change hold special value here because you won't be given the values to fill in your formula in percentage change uh, forms. You will be given price in dollars or pounds or other currencies, and you'll be given quantity in units, 5,000 units, 10,000 units. So you will have to convert those units and prices into percentage change every time. And the way to do that is following this formula for percentage change new minus old divided by old so if you ask to change if you're if you're calculating percentage change in quantity demanded you can you fill in the new quantity then the old one divided by old and the value that you get that value goes into the numerator and the same would be true for the denominator as well so this and this is the way to calculate the numerator and the denominator so let's let's look at an example let's let's look at a question where you might be asked a price elasticity question now so we are we're given a scenario here and i'm just going to read it out for you that this is a company called da and as part of da's plan for growth the board of directors has agreed to extend the product portfolio a new range will be launched next year and the most expensive boot in the year will be called the da explorer Forecast demand for DA Explorer at a price of $200 is 10,000 units. So if they expect to price their boots at $200, they expect to sell 10,000 units. Forecast demand at a price of $80 
is 11,300 units. And this would make sense, right? When you drop the price by $20, the quantity demanded has gone up by 1,300 units. The question is to calculate the price elasticity of demand for DA Explorer boot if the price is reduced from $20, or $200, pardon me, to $180. So a $20 decrease in price. Now what you do at this point is you go to your formula and you first try to figure out percentage change in quantity demanded using this formula. So if I am calculating my, I'm gonna call that Q here, Q percentage change. If I'm calculating that here, my new quantity is 11,300. My old one was 10,000. My new quantity, uh, pardon me, my old quantity is 10,000 as well. And when I solve for this, it gives me 0.13. Three. So, so that's the numerator part done. Next up is my price. So I'm gonna write P percentage change. And my new price is 180. My old price was 200 divided by old price of 200. And this time when I solve for this, it tells me I get a figure of minus 0.1. That's my denominator. Now, I've just got one thing left to do and then figure out what 0.13 divided by minus 0.1 is. And when I solve for this, it tells me that my price elasticity of demand is minus 1.3. Now, you must be wondering, what's up with this minus sign? Well, this minus sign does not have any really meaning for what we're going to talk about in a bit, but what this minus sign means is that there is an inverse relationship between price and quantity. We already know that, that's a fact of life, but when something's more expensive, you buy less of it. When something's cheaper, you buy more of it. And this minus sign just indicates that. You could choose to leave this out of your calculation, leave it there, it's all the same. Now, this business is going to launch this product called DA Explorer. They haven't done it yet. And PED calculations are always done before you launch a product as well. So at this point, they have two choices. They could choose to launch it at 200 and sell one, uh, 10,000 units, or they could choose to sell it at 180 and sell 11,300. So, so they're both fine, they're both options. How do you decide between the two? Well, the decision lies with the calculation of total revenue. So let's see what happens if they keep the old price of 200. If you multiply 200 by 10,000, right, 10K for it, you will be making $2 million from the sale of DA Explorer. However, if you change the price, and this time you go for $180, as we discussed, might be the new price, Multiply, multiply that by 11.3,000, 11,300 units. This time I get 2.034 million. So you stand to make a little bit more. How much more? 0.34 million more at $180 than you would have at 200. So perhaps it's better to reduce the price and sell more units than increasing the price and selling fewer units. And at the end of it, whichever strategy gives you the higher total revenue is the right choice going forward. Now, in our example just now, we saw that the DA Explorer boot had a price elasticity of demand of 1.3, right? Now, what does that mean? We have to understand what that number means. What does it signify? And whenever it comes to the PED calculation, the number one holds the most significance. Because anytime your calculation yields a number below one, for example, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, so on and so forth, that is called an inelastic demand. And if a number is of greater than one, let's say 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 or two or four and such numbers, we call that elastic demand. Now, what does that mean? Let's look at it for a minute. Let's look at inelastic first. Inelastic is when the number is less than one. Doesn't matter if it's a minus sign or not, you would remember that, it has no significance, but as long as the number is less than one, we call that inelastic. Now what that means is that no matter how much you change your price by, 
in this example we can see that the price has been cut by 10 percent the response in quantity demanded in proportion is very small so a five percent cut has only brought a five percent increase in quantity demanded the reverse may also be true by the way and instead of uh, cutting your price if you decide to increase the price of your product let's say from uh, 10 percent then the quantity demanded will only decrease by 5% and not more. So that's what inelastic demand means when the change in price and the change in quantity demanded in promotion is relatively smaller. Elastic demand is the exact opposite. That is where even a small cut in your price, a 10% price cut will bring about a larger change in the quantity demanded of the product. As you can see here, 30%. And once again, the reverse will also be true. That if you decide to increase the price by 10% rather than cutting it, then the quantity demanded of your product might fall by 30%. So that's what PED is used for to determine what kind of a product are you selling. So for DA Explorer, they know that they're selling an elastic product. The elasticity was 1.3. What that means is that if they increase the price by even a little bit, if they go from 182 to 200, then they can lose the quantity demanded by a larger proportion. And really that's what the concept of PED is all about. Understanding the kind of product that you're making and understanding the relationship that price has to the demand for your product. The more you increase the price, the less you'll sell. The lower your price is, the more you'll sell. But in the end, whichever strategy brings you the most revenue is the one that you go ahead with.